Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers constructive possession, underage drinking, and arrests for minor offenses, and is brought to us by Crime Scene Chronicles' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On April 7th, 2021, Officer Gustavo Avina of the New Mexico State Police pulled over a vehicle of young adults for an alleged speeding offense. The interaction that followed was captured on Officer Avina's body camera. Oh, yes, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. Huh? Can you pop the trunk and, op and get out of the vehicle, please? There's like beer in the back, I think. Okay. Wow, look at this. Okay, but do you have a license? No, sir. He, she didn't bring her license. Okay, go ahead and leave me in the back, please. Have you been drinking? That's the question, because everybody smells like no, alcohol no, no, in there. No, no, like, I've been, I've been a DD since it does Okay, I would like to check your eyes, because your eyes are very red. Oh, well, okay? kind of and you got too much crying. beer in there. Huh? No, no, the crying is one thing, the alcohol is something else. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand the crying part. Here, here's my eyes. Okay, so can I check your eyes real quick? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I see alcohol in your eyes. Okay? Alcohol in your eyes. I see alcohol in your eyes. I want to do two more tests. I understand that you're 18 years old and yeah, you shouldn't I, be in possession of alcohol. Yeah, I do, I do. But and like, there's an odor of alcohol from you too. Okay. Yeah, but I, honestly, I'm not saying you're I wasn't intoxicated. Aware, I wasn't aware that there was I don't think you're intoxicated. In the back of my car. No, you were aware because that's your car, and they had to open the trunk to put it in there. So no, you were but aware. No, it was unlocked when we were at the desert. Okay. I'm gonna give you two options. Okay. My first option: you're underage, you smell like alcohol, and there's beer in your car. I can arrest you. That's one option, and I can tow your car. Option two tickets call your parents and they come and get your car you all leave with tickets and that's it that's option two so you tell me which one do you want okay go, you can go get it Officer Ravina asks the driver whether she would rather be arrested or have everyone in the vehicle receive tickets, and she chooses to have all the occupants receive citations. Under Section 60-7B-1 of the New Mexico Statutes, which defines a so-called minor as an individual under the age of 21, quote, It is a violation of the Liquor Control Act for a minor to buy, attempt to buy, receive, possess, or permit the minor self to be served with alcoholic beverages. Although the alcoholic beverages were found in the trunk of the vehicle, and not on the person of any occupant of the vehicle, it is still possible that the occupants could be convicted of violating this statute based on a legal doctrine known as constructive possession. As the Supreme Court of New Mexico explained in the 2004 case of State v. Barber, quote, when actual physical control cannot be directly proven, constructive possession is a legal fiction used to expand possession and include those cases where the inference that there has been possession at one time is exceedingly strong. According to Instruction 14-130 of the New Mexico Uniform Jury Instructions, a person is considered to be in possession of an object when, quote, he knows what it is, he knows it is in his presence, and he exercises control over it. Now, while the jury instructions also state that, quote, two or or more people can have possession of an object at the same time, they further clarify that, quote, a person's presence in the vicinity of the object or his knowledge of the existence or the location of the object is not by itself possession. Likewise, the New Mexico Supreme Court noted in the Barber case that, quote, mere presence or proximity, even with knowledge, is not enough. There must be proof of so-called control over the contraband for the jury to convict of possession. And in the 2005 case of State versus Garcia, it concluded that when multiple occupants of a vehicle have quote-unquote equal access to contraband, additional facts beyond mere physical proximity are required to establish that any one occupant had control over and therefore possessed the contraband. In this situation, Officer Avina claimed to smell alcohol on the breath of the occupants, which a court could determine to be sufficient evidence that each of them possessed the beverages at one time. And although it is likely that a court would conclude that Officer Avina had probable cause to issue such citations to each of the occupants for being a minor in possession of alcohol, the occupants would have cognizable arguments that there was insufficient evidence that any one of them exercised control over the beverages. It should also be noted that Section 66-8-138 of the New Mexico Statutes, which is the state's so-called open container statute, states that, quote, no person shall knowingly have
have in the person's possession on the person's body while in a motor vehicle upon any public highway within this state, any bottle, can, or other receptacle containing any alcoholic beverage that has been opened or had its seal broken, or the contents of which have been partially removed. However, in the 2010 case of State v. Navarez, the Court of Appeals of New Mexico held that this statute cannot be violated by constructive possession when an open container is merely located in the vehicle, even if the evidence is sufficient to establish knowledge of and control over the open container. In reaching this conclusion, the court reasoned that while constructive possession of illegal contraband is generally sufficient to sustain a conviction, the open container statute specifically required that an individual have possession on their person. Therefore, even if Officer Avina found open containers of alcohol in the trunk of the vehicle, neither the driver nor the occupants could be convicted of an open container violation. Okay. All you guys have cell phones, right? Yes. So you need to call it. Okay, you guys need to call your parents and they come they need to come pick you guys up. Yes, I need to talk to each of you guys' parents. If somebody else is gonna pick you up, you can do that, but I need to talk to your parents. Okay? So you have some time to call your parents, okay? Yeah, my parents are already on the way. Yeah, okay. As soon as you can. Okay. I don't know. You were why going I you, can't take the car. Let back. me explain. You were I have going a genuine question almost for you. twenty miles over the posted speed. Do you think that's yeah, normal? I understand that. I genuinely Um actually yes. people what's your question? Huh? I genuinely understand <laughs> Keep her in the car because she's going to get arrested. Young girl, you're going to get arrested, okay? Just stay in the car. If you would have been just speeding and no beer in the car and no odor of alcohol inside, perfect. I'll just give you a ticket and maybe a break. But there's other stuff and there's odor of alcohol. You guys are not even 21. Anybody 21 to buy the beer in the car? No, sir. Well, someone 21 bought us the beer. Okay. Uh, of course. Out of the car yes. All right, so just stop. Somebody 21 had to buy it. Yeah, I, I, what was that? I understand that, sir. I understand that, sir. So someone coming right now, they're going to drive the car, they're going to drive the vehicle, and then we'll be able to leave with tickets? Yes, with tickets. I you, can take the two girls. Okay, just give me a second. I need they're to talk twins. to another one. Okay. What You're the other twin? Yes. Okay, come Do on. Do you want to talk to my mom? Okay. 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 How's your mom going to drive her car? Um, sir, but, so no one. The car situation, like somebody needs to come get the car, an adult. Okay, yeah. So my mom can. Drive or somebody it. 18. It doesn't no, matter. Yeah, so, well, we're 18. So my mom can drive it, and I can drive her car. Is that cool? Yeah. 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 Actually, no, because you were in the car. Actually, okay. none of you guys can drive. None of us. Because there's alcohol in the car. The reason why I'm you calling your parents it. is because none of you guys can drive. There's alcohol in the car, and you guys work. But how do you know that okay. we're drunk? It's empty cancer. I'm sorry, but it's empty cancer. Please, sorry, please, please. No, I'm just, I'm sorry. There's no proof of full cans. No, 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 no. One of the passengers, whose first name is Kaylee, argues that there is no proof of possession of alcohol because the cans in the trunk of the car are empty. In the 1997 case of State v. Tywayne H., the Court of Appeals of New Mexico determined that an officer did not have probable cause to arrest a juvenile for possessing alcohol based on the smell of alcohol on his breath and his admission to previously consuming a beer. In support of this decision, the court argued that, quote, one does not possess alcohol in one's body, and that, now quoting again, past possession cannot sustain an arrest. However, it is important to note that although Section 60-7b-1 is commonly referred to as the minor in possession statute, in addition to prohibiting possession of alcohol, it also forbids minors from buying, attempting to buy, receiving, or permitting themselves to be served with alcoholic beverages. Accordingly, in the 2009 case of Montoya v. Romero, the U.S. District Court for the District of New Mexico held that an officer had probable cause to charge a minor for violating this statute simply based on the admission that he was underage and had been drinking. Therefore, while the fact that the cans were all empty could potentially be a defense to a charge that the vehicle's occupants possessed alcohol, although it is still possible that at least some of the cans were not entirely empty, it is likely that a court would still find that Officer Avina still had probable cause to issue the citations based on the empty cans and the smell of alcohol on the vehicle's occupants. Come here. No, Come sir. here. I'm just... Sir, I'm just asking you. I'm tired of you. Okay. You argue question. too much, you're going to no, get in my car. Yes, yes, yes. No, sir, I'm just car. asking you a question. Sit down in the back. Sir, I'm just asking you a question. Back. Sit down in the back. No, I'm just asking you a question. Asking you a question you're going to be under arrest and you're going to no, go to jail. No, no, yes. Please, yes. Please, no, you are. Please, the please, only I'm one arguing and question. giving me. No, you're not asking a question. Sir, please. No. Please. Young girl, you're in the middle. Yes, come here. Just turn right here. She's gonna be placed. She's gonna be placed under arrest. I'm, I'm taking so her. I am taking her. Okay. okay. Just for asking a question. No, sir? no. She's being actually kind of rude and 
arguing so the whole time. She was asking a question. No, there's questions and there's getting over. It's okay. Like well, too much. But do you think she crossed the line, sir? Yeah, you I think. Yeah. yeah, I gave her a warning already. Okay. Please there's only so much that I can do. Ashley, no. Ashley. She's gonna go. May I ask, um, what prison are you gonna be taking her to? Las Cruces, Doñana County Detention Center. Tell your mom that right now so she can get Kaylee when she gets there. Don't argue, Kaylee. Hey, can you guys go over there, please? But I can still take both of you guys, okay? Please go to the car. Okay, is your daughter one of the uh, people that I arrested? I guess you, I don't know, just somebody told me you okay. couldn't arrest them and now you arrested yes, her. Is yes. there any way you can let her go? No, but uh, she's going to be going to Las Cruces. You guys can probably pick her up later today. Is, I mean, can you do me a favor? I'm a yes. physician. I'm in the middle of the VA. I, yes, I'm seeing patients. Okay, I'm letting the other people go. But she's not but going. Please let her go. She will not go, okay? You guys are not my kids. No, of course not. I shouldn't have conversations with you. I, I'm explaining the I mean, best. But, but it's because I, I honestly like. You know, if my kids are yelling at me, boom, guess what? Yeah, yeah. They're going to a room. I can't do that to you guys, but I can do this. But it's, I think it's, you gave her a warning, but I don't think it was a direct warning. No? I said, okay. stay in your car, <laughs> no, 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 but That's just, not like, a direct you, warning? You're kind of telling like, all of us, like, no. Like, None of you guys were doing nothing, things. really. Hey, let me have your phone. Let me have what's up right there. Have your purse. I'm gonna put this in the front seat. Can I at least talk to my mom? Like, can you please? What do you like, need? I'm sorry for having an attitude with you, sir. Like, I just really want to get out of here. You can't get out of here right now. No, I know. I'm not if you want to use the restroom, look. Go behind the bushes. I'll wait here. I mean, I don't know where else. So we can't leave until this. Course. I can't leave until we pick it up. So I'm going to jail. Yes, you are. You're under arrest. Actually, I'm going to put cuffs on you before we go. I have to put handcuffs. Why, sir? Why? I'm sorry, sir. Because that's please. just the law. I can't, I don't make what the law. What did I do, sir? You don't know what you did? No, mm. please tell me, sir. What did I do? You might want to have to work on your can anger I, management. Can you please put my, my mom on the phone while you're on call with her, please? Here. I didn't drive okay. the thing or anything. The tickets, I don't know what I did, sir. Okay, the tickets I gave to everybody are arrestable offenses. All of them. All you guys. Why did, why did, why was I only the one that got Because you're the one with the attitude. Officer Ravina claims that being a minor in possession of alcohol is an arrestable offense, and that Ms. Cayley was arrested because she was the only one with a quote-unquote attitude. Although a minor in possession of alcohol violation is a misdemeanor, the statute specifically states that first-time violators will be punished with a $1,000 fine and 30 hours of community service, with no jail time being authorized. As we have discussed before here on ATA, the Supreme Supreme Court determined in the 2001 case of Atwater v. City of Lago Vista that the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution does not prohibit law enforcement officers from arresting individuals for minor offenses, including misdemeanors punishable only by a fine, as long as the arrest is supported by probable cause. However, in the 2005 case of State v. Rodardi, the Court of Appeals of New Mexico held that the state constitution does not permit arrests for non-jailable offenses on the basis of probable cause alone, because the prior Privacy protections afforded by Article 2, Section 10 of the New Mexico Constitution are greater than the protections granted by the Fourth Amendment. Instead, the court noted that the quote-unquote ultimate question as to whether an arrest violates Article 2, Section 10 is reasonableness. And, adopting the test proposed by Justice Sandra Day O'Connor in her dissenting opinion in the Atwater case, the court ultimately concluded that, quote, probable cause that a non-jailable offense has been committed does not automatically make arrest reasonable and that for such arrests to be reasonable, there must be specific and articulable facts which, taken together with rational inferences from those facts, reasonably warrant the additional intrusion of a full custodial arrest. Applying this standard, the Rodardi court determined that the custodial arrest of an individual for a violation of the minor in possession statute was unreasonable because, now quoting, there were no circumstances justifying the officer's choice to arrest rather than issue a citation when there was no suggestion that the individual acted in a violent or confrontational manner, the individual was not driving the vehicle, and the individual appeared to have complied with all of the officer's requests. In reaching this conclusion, the court also recognized that, quote, when a non-jailable offense has been committed, the balancing of governmental and individual interests will generally weigh heavily in favor of the individual, such that it will often be unreasonable to make an arrest. Accordingly, it is likely that a court would conclude that Officer Avina's 
decision to arrest Ms. Cayley based on her quote-unquote attitude was unreasonable under Article 2, Section 10 of the New Mexico Constitution. Because, although she did engage in First Amendment protected speech by verbally articulating her concerns regarding the legitimacy of the minor in possession charge, she did not behave violently in any way before she was placed under arrest, she was not driving the vehicle, and she did not refuse to physically comply with any of Officer Avina's orders. But I'm sorry, sir. You're the one with the attitude, and they were not. I had to be in handcuffs. I wasn't even driving, sir. I didn't say you were driving. Mom, I'm in handcuffs, and I didn't do anything, Mom. You're not in handcuffs. This cop is putting me in handcuffs for not even doing anything. Katie, you need to be quiet. You should have listened to him. Katie, you weren't smart. But why am I put in handcuffs? I didn't even say anything insulting to the police officer. I didn't say one bad word or anything bad, Mom. Please, just why can't you let me go? I'm a teenager. You don't think teenagers get mad? Mom, I'm shutting up. I just want you to be here with me, Mom. I'm scared. What do you want me to do? I can't take you out of jail. No, Ma'am, can I have a few words with you? Let me explain something. I told you the reason why I stopped the vehicle. They were speeding. There's a lot of alcohol in the car. Right. I'm going to give you guys tickets instead of arresting all you guys. This right. young girl was giving me attitude the whole time, and I told her, just please to stay up. quiet, yeah. stay in the car. Let me deal with each of you, each of you guys individually. When it was your daughter's turn, I was trying to yes. explain, and she started giving me attitude again. I said, you know what? I said, I'm done. The tickets that I gave everybody, they're arrestable offenses, okay? This is, this is, this is not a good area to leave a car. Cars get okay. uh, vandalized all the time here. She's going to be going to Las Cruces, and actually you can pick her up in Las Cruces later tonight. So what is exactly going to happen with her? I mean, you are booking her. Stop! Stop! Get out. Stop! Get out. Get out. Stop. Put your hand behind your back. Please, no. You're not going to hurt yourself, okay? No. You're going to hurt yourself, okay? I don't want and I'm not, to. I'm not going to let that happen. Oh, I should have put you in cuffs the first time. Why are you hitting yourself? Here it doesn't matter. Anymore. You don't hit yourself. So what is that going to do? Is that going to solve the problem? Yes, it is. Hitting, your, hitting yourself. Shoot me now. We should shoot me. Please. Sit down. If you hit my car, if I hear one bang, I'm going to add extra charges. Just so you know. I did nothing against the law. Though, you, you you were, you're hitting my car. That is against the law. Why was I in here before? Because you're being disrespectful. But sir, I shouldn't be arrested for that. Yes, you are. I just said, why are we you being don't... arrested? And you arrested me. I sir. didn't arrest anybody. Sir, I okay. did nothing wrong. So how come your other friends went home and you didn't? You arrested me for having an attitude. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank the charge is minor in possession of alcoholic Thank beverages. You, What's your name? Avinia. What's it? Gustavo. So this is what I had. I have a young girl. She got arrested. And I put her in the back of my unit. And all of a sudden, she started hitting her head like really hard. I would say 15 times because I was out of my car and I could hear something. I thought she was kicking. So when I went inside, she was hitting her head on the, it's going to be on the right side. And uh, she said something that just killed me. I want to kill myself, stuff like that. And I just want to make sure she's okay. So if you want to transfer her, we'll transfer her. Well, I don't know. Uh, you want to talk to her and she, see how she feels? I mean, I don't know. Do you have a nurse at the jail? Yeah. Right. She'll understand that. Is this normal or too high? It's normal. After EMS cleared Ms. Cayley, she was transported to the Doniana County Detention Center. Very little information is available about this encounter, and without knowing the full names of Ms. Cayley and the other occupants of the vehicle, I was unable to confirm the status of the minor in possession charges against them. Overall, Officer Avina gets a C+. Plus because although he maintained a mostly professional and respectful demeanor throughout the encounter and appeared to be concerned for Ms. Cayley's well-being after she engaged in self-harming conduct, he likely violated the New Mexico Constitution by arresting Ms. Cayley for her so-called attitude and retaliated against her for engaging in First Amendment-protected speech. Now, while Officer Avina seemed to genuinely believe that his arrest of Ms. Cayley was lawful, and I do not believe he intentionally violated the New Mexico Constitution, he admitted to making the decision to arrest her based solely on her speech and perceived lack of respect for his authority. When an officer demands absolute submission from a citizen, they risk making a power trip decision that does not result in the best outcome for the interaction, and in some instances, violates the laws. That being said, Officer Avina showed some promising behaviors during this encounter, and I would encourage him to learn more about the New Mexico Constitution and work on keeping his ego in check to improve his effect. 
effectiveness. As for Ms. Cayley, it's difficult to assign an accurate grade to an individual who was under the influence of alcohol during an encounter, and Ms. Cayley clearly suffered significant emotional distress after she was arrested. Now, while I believe that everything Ms. Cayley said was protected by the First Amendment, she certainly could have challenged Officer Avina more respectfully. And, as we have discussed many times on ATA, it's typically more effective to contest a criminal charge in the courtroom than to argue with the officer on the scene. Although I do not know whether Ms. Cayley was struggling with underlying mental health issues, or her conduct was simply the result of overindulging in alcohol, her self-harming behavior and comments were certainly concerning, and I hope that she's been able to seek help if she needs it. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content. Thank you.